Getting ready for calculus, I think, is the most important chapter to start with calculus. So before you really get into calculus, it's good to review some concepts so that you can understand all the concepts which you learn in calculus. Most of the things which are going to come for you, or you'll hear them or understand them for the first time. And uh, don't get surprised. So having a good foundation is very important. So I have set off a couple of questions, more than 10, here in this series, picked up from different topics, which I think are very important for you to know, and you should understand the concepts before getting into calculus. If you're struggling with any one of them, then on that particular topic, you should review, you should see my videos, I have playlist, huge number of questions, right? practice and then start with calculus. Here is the first one. Question number one. State whether the following functions are continuous or discontinuous at x equals to minus 3. So knowledge of functions, their continuity, discontinuity, domain, range is kind of very important for calculus. Now this is a very simple question to start with. So x equals to minus 3, we need to check whether it's continuous or not, right? I'll also like you to understand, if you know it is discontinuous, what kind of discontinuity it is. That is also uh, to be understood. Now let's plug in x equals to minus 3 and see what happens. So if I put x equals to minus 3, I get 0 in the numerator. That is fine. Function could be 0. But if I plug in x equals to minus 3 in the denominator, minus 3 cube is also minus 27. And minus 27 plus 27 will give me 0. So I get a 0 in the denominator also. Now if 0 is in the denominator, then it makes no sense. And that shows that this is a discontinuous function. So we know this is discontinuous, right? So we know it is discontinuous. Now, can you tell me what kind of discontinuity it is? Now, since both numerator and denominator became 0. That means there is a factor x minus 3. I mean, there is a factor x plus 3 in both numerator and denominator. So for x equals to minus 3, we got a 0. And in this case, that should yield to a whole, correct? So if you see, let me explore more on this. So we can write this as x plus 3 divided by, do you remember, x cubed plus 27, how it can be factored, sum of cubes formula. So difference of cubes, sum of cubes and factoring is also a very important part. You may have to review that if you don't know this. So this is x plus 3 times x squared plus 2 times this, which is 6x plus 9. So that is how you factor the denominator. And as you can see, we do have a factor x plus 3 in both numerator and denominator. That cancels out. And that means what? We have a whole at x equals to minus 3. Correct? So that is the type of discontinuity we have for this particular function. Correct? So it is discontinuous function. And it is not a vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 3. It's a whole at x equals to minus 3. So that is very important for you to understand. Now the second question is, so these are different questions, right? Let me say this is A, this is B, and this is C, right? The second question is hx equals to x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 9. So I should actually say h of x, right? It's a function. Now if I plug in minus 3 here, do a, what do I get? I get 0 in the numerator, but I don't get 0 here. Do you see? Denominator is always positive. And it has no restriction at all, right? It has no restrictions, correct? So this function is actually continuous. So this function is continuous, right? If you simplify this function, then we'll get h of x is actually equals to is the same thing, right? It, because there is no common factor you cannot factor x squared plus 9, right? So we say h of x is continuous. 
right as I have written already correct so it has no discontinuity at all right now as a part of this exercise I would like you to sketch this function so that you understand why this function is actually continuous it's kind of a rational function right so try to sketch this function and get your answer now the next one is this function continuous or not so this is the piecewise function understanding piecewise functions is also very important so at x equals to minus 3 so what well, if there is a break at minus 3 so we need to check whether it is continuous or not the best way to check continuity is to plug in x equals to minus 3 and see what value does it stop at or what value it does not have right so it's like x plus 2 is a line correct and uh, you, you can draw this line kind of like this positive line like this going like this right and this point happens to be at minus 3 so what is actually this point that is what we're trying to understand so if I plug in minus 3 here I get minus 3 plus 2 and so I get this point as minus 1 and the y value is 2 right oh, sorry uh, so minus 1 we get right so the x value is minus 3 so at this point is at minus 3 and minus 1 correct so when I plug in minus 3 here I get minus 1 so that's the y value or g of minus 3 is minus 1 if I plug in minus 3 here what do I get I get now this is also a straight line correct with a different slope correct and the intercept is also different but here what do I get I get and this is less than minus 3 so this line is kind of uh, you can say at minus 3 let me write this whole and kind of like this correct but this line at minus 3 if I put minus 3 for x what do I get minus 3 times 3 is minus 9 and minus 9 plus 8 is minus 1 so I get the same value I mean so basically this is actually included so uh, here this is included right so actually this gets fit into that part correct so that is how it is so basically if I redraw it I know I've done some mistakes here let me redraw it correct let me re redraw it so let me redraw both the lines and this time in different colors so that I don't really confuse you so we are here at minus 3 so this is minus 3 for us so what we see is if I plug in minus 3 here then the y value is minus 3 plus 2 which is minus 1 so at minus 3 I have minus 1 now since it is greater than or equal to 1 this hole is filled up correct right? and my y-intercept is 2 so let's say my y-intercept is 2 so this line will go like this so that is my g of x for x greater than or equal to minus 3 right now the other half of the line is when it is less than minus 3 that means there is a hole right and if I plug in minus 3 here I get minus 1 which is the same value which is minus 1 now the slope of this line is the y if I put x as 8 y intercept is way beyond it's like a steeper line so this line is kind of like this do you see that so that is the next part as you can see that when we plug in minus 3 here so we get what so we get x plus 2 this is my first part 3x plus 8 right if I put minus 3 I get minus 3 plus 2 which is minus 1 if I put minus 3 3 times minus 3 plus plus 8 this is 8 plus 8 gives me minus 9 plus 8 which is also equals to minus 1 correct and therefore we see that the function is continuous so let me write continuous here so it is continuous as shown here in the figure right so this is what we have drawn for g of x and that point is actually 2 for us right and this is minus 1 and this point is minus 3 so that is how you are going to get this piece function together in a graph and I hope you understand after all that mess up uh, how it should be done correct so look into piecewise functions if you have difficulty in these kinds of problems okay move on 
with all these questions and wherever you have some difficulty review and then move on with calculus that's the whole idea of getting started with calculus series which I put for you here thank you and all the best